Hi. Hello. So please introduce yourself. Uh, so my name is Hikmet. I am coming from IMEC Belgium. And, uh, also I'm affiliated with Kai Leuven University. Um, and this is the, the work of uh, our department on the SID 2024. Uh, we are presenting a multimodal intelligent display backplane blocks, which means that uh, in, the, in the future applications of display, maybe uh, the, the all the all kind of applications can be merged together in the same backplane using a single um, single foundry and same design. And here um, we show different uh, results from our different projects, uh, starting from, um, uh, for example, the two, that one is a uh, 10 bit analog to digital conversion. Uh, so, compared to IGZO with the LTPS technology, we have a better resolution and faster uh, conversion. And that one is a DC DC power conversion, which is uh, a, tar a key uh, component for our uh, ultrasound applications, which is uh, requiring a uh, high current and high voltage for uh, driving the piezoelectric materials. And uh, in this uh, demo, I am showing uh, our digital uh, circuit, which is the 8-bit microprocessor, uh, which uh, you can see in here. Uh, that uh, flexible microprocessor is uh, made with LTPS CMOS technology. Uh, it works with the 454 kilohertz uh, clock speed. And uh, compared to EXO, uh, EXO version, it is uh, more power efficient and uh, higher uh, operation speed. And in this uh, demo, I am showing a snake game uh, running on the, on the LTPS 6502 circuitry. So if you want, I can already start uh, the game. So, okay, it didn't work. I have to reprogram it. Uh, so actually, the, the, the assembly code is completely running on the on the microprocessor, and um, here on the on the display we have eight by eight uh, pixels. So zeros stand for the empty area, and one ones will be the snake body, and the ee -E will be the the apple that we have to eat. With the while well, it didn't work again. <laughs> So um, it's running on that chip right there? Yes, exactly. But it was it's a, it's yeah. a demo thing, yes. demo effect. Yes. No problem. So what do we see here? So what are we seeing here is the, the, the clock frequency uh, of the chip right now. It's uh, 10 kilohertz. But uh, for the game, if I could show you, maybe I can show it running on the FPGA, actually. Uh, there's an FPGA version as a backup. So this should work. So here we see uh, the clock frequency uh, on the right. And here what you see is the 8x8 snake game. The 1-1 one one is the snake and the EE is the apple. Uh, it's now running in 10 kilohertz, a bit slow. But now eating the apple becomes larger. And then I can increase the speed. Now it is uh, 40 kilohertz. So um, what's a backplane? So the backplane is uh, the technology which is mostly used in the displays uh, currently in our... Uh, is the stuff behind? The, the, the stuff behind the, the OLED, or LEDs, or, or the, uh, the photodiodes on, on the large area. Uh, also behind circuit. the LCDs. Exactly, behind the LCDs. And this backplane means the, the, the circuitry, circuit side of the, the system, uh, which so, is the thin film transistors. So this part here, Yes, this part here is a cut uh, is a small dice which is cut from a, a, a big a big plate which is diced and uh, from the reticles and then this part only includes the thin film transistors. There is no OLED here in this in this uh, piece of uh, yeah, sample. Um, so then you would uh, you would uh, deposit the OLED so it connects. On the exactly, back plane. exactly. Actually, this project is uh, we, we used uh, the foundry of uh, Inolux company uh, for the LTPS uh, uh, circuitry, and they have already uh, embedded OLED uh, in their uh, stack. But um, yes, depending on the project, you may not need it. Or uh, is this um, is this uh, also a bunch of them? Yes, this is a couple of samples that I brought with me. Um, uh, in each uh, dice, there are two uh, microprocessor cores, uh, but they are isolated from each other using the same uh, same pin connection. 
It, it looks like a smudge. Uh, it's like look like a fingerprint. Exactly, exactly. It looks but like it's a fingerprint. Processor? Uh, the processor is like what is what looks like finger, fingerprint. All the transistors are there. For example, the empty area there's only metals, but in the dark area there are actually transistors which is not really visible. But uh, if you zoom in enough, you will see the three micron uh, channel length uh, transistors. Uh, it looks like it's on a flexible material. Yes, it's on a flexible material. Although these samples are uh, still on the glass, but if you uh, eliminate it by laser uh, uh, tool, you can uh, de uh, eliminate the flexible part from the glass. This picture is, for example, we took it after delaminating it. It is a flexible uh, microprocessor. So uh, here I see EXO. That's, not, that's the other thing. That's right? the other thing. So there are two uh, versions of this uh, microprocessor we designed. One is uh, designed with LTPS, which is low temperature for silicon, and CMOS corresponds for complementary metal oxide semiconductor, which means that there is N-type and P-type technologies, uh, uh, sorry, transistors, both available in the LTPS foundry. But IGZO uh, only available, IGZO means indium gallium zinc oxide, and with, uh, with the metal oxide semiconductors, uh, only N-type transistors are uh, uh, possible to this uh, possible to process and here there is PCMOS which means pseudo CMOS uh, which corresponds to a circuit design technique which mimics CMOS inverter uh, only using n type uh, transistors uh, that's why I, because there is no p type transistors in the exo version we had to do use another technique which is pseudo CMOS so exo has been quite awesome for the display industry right yes but ltps also uh, yes, uh, as far as I know, because I am not directly involved in the display design, but I think the scale, large area scalability of EXO is better than LTPS. I don't want to say something wrong, but uh, that's what I know. Uh, they have both different applications, of course. Uh, for example, EXO is also better for their low leakage current. So in memory applications also it is used uh, in, some, in some cases. Which means that if you turn your transistor off, you will have almost zero current flowing from your transistor if it's EXO. But with LTPS, that is, uh, there's a bit leakage uh, issue. But specifically for the digital application, it's not a disadvantage because with the, using the P, PMOS, you can already uh, switch off so that you can save power. Uh, but uh, uh, the, yeah. why is this EXO smaller than the LTPS stuff on the yes. image? True, the, because the, the transistors uh, with the, the EXO transistors have channel length of 800 nanometer. Uh, the LTPS transistors uh, have three micro nanometers, so the scaling is different, uh, and they are all they are di from different foundries. Uh, the EXO circuit is made with pragmatic uh, using uh, with collaboration of uh, with the pragmatic foundry from uh, UK to, to make the flexible. Flexible systems. Exactly. Flexible CPU, flexible. It, does it work? Yes. Pragmatic so is great? Uh, they are both great, <laughs> Inolux and Pragmatic. So, yeah, but uh, for different applications. Um, and this one is uh, Inolux? This one is the Inolux sample, yes. Inolux uh, LTPS CMOS. So, uh, how many flexible CPUs out there so far? So far, there are uh, actually not so little. Uh, in the like ten years ago, also there were some uh, publications with the flexible uh, microprocessors. Uh, but now the technology is evolving, and the, the channel lengths are uh, getting smaller. Scaling is improving. Uh, there is uh, there are some works done by that. But this is actually our latest publication. Uh, so this part of the, the, the microprocessor part of this publication. Is already the results are already published in Nature last month. Um, so so uh, I did a video with the Pragmatic six seven years ago, and there was ARM involved. Exactly. And they were talking about putting ARM CPUs on a flexible system plastic yes. kind of thing. Yes. And uh, have they succeeded? Yes. Uh, so six seven years ago, you say they were working on it, right? I think so. So uh, yeah. I think uh, three years ago. They already made a 32-bit uh, ARM processor using only uh, EXO transistors. Uh, instead of pseudo-CMOS, they use the resistor load, which is uh, another uh, standard cell design technique because lacking of P-type transistor. 
So, so uh, it was not just a dream at a trade show. It's actually happened. It actually happened. Yes. And those 32-bit uh, microcontrollers, yes. ARM microcontrollers yes. on the flexible, are deployed in the world and used for something. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't see it, but as a proof of concept, they succeeded. Yes. Because I was thinking six, seven years ago, soon we'll have uh, chips in the carpets. It's going to be all over the place, yeah, right? Yeah, that will be really cool. But it's not yet quite ever. Um, like it's not trillion. No. Chips everywhere. No, 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 no. Not yet. Not yet, not yet. But uh, still, the main uh, main application area for uh, thin film transistors is the displays. So the other uh, other circuitry is, uh, yeah, I think there's still more time needed for that. And uh, I hear some some people talking about the, is it the backplanes that make displays expensive sometimes? Or... Mm. What is it that makes them cheaper? Are you doing anything to help them become cheaper? Or no? Uh, or different I think, thing? Uh, in, in, yeah, if, for example, for the silicon, CMO, uh, silicon technology, silicon uh, electronics technology, there's a uh, Moore's law. And Moore's law, su uh, um, not suggests, but uh, says that, predicts that uh, the, 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 the cost of the same chip will eventually become cheaper because of improving technology, you can uh, make a smaller, you can make the same circuit using a smaller chip area, a uh, semiconductor area, which will make it cheaper. But same thing, I think, is happening in the uh, thin film transistor technology. So same quality display, let's say, uh, it will be produced in a cheaper cost in the future. I can, I think. All right. Well, so, uh, you, yeah, thank you. Do you think a lot of people are looking at what you're doing here, and uh, iMac is often involved in the next things that yes. is going to be billions of dollars of business in the future. Uh, so iMac actually has many, many uh, research areas on the, in the nanotechnology. Uh, our department is uh, uh, one, of that, uh, one of that. Our department is currently working on different activities. One of them is uh, EVOT, which is electro on, uh, on uh, I forgot, B, electro which means you can control the, the, the liquids for biomedical applications uh, by, by the pixels. And the PMAT activities we have, which is the ultrasound transducers, uh, piezoelectric material ultrasound transducers. Uh, that, uh, in that direction, we work on um, some imager type of projects, let's say, uh, which is, which doesn't include OLED or uh, photodiode, but another uh, material called piezoelectric material, which can uh, vibrate or which can sense the vibration in the other in the other way around to convert to the charge or convert charge to the vibration. Let's say so that can be used for sen uh, sensing uh, haptic feedback or other uh, ultrasound applications. But for other, uh, there are uh, too many other uh, uh, research areas of IMEC. Uh, uh, not only on the team film transistors, let's say, but mainly also on the silicon CMOS technologies. All right, and a lot of collaboration with every country in the world. Yes, exactly. Right? exactly. And uh, uh, everybody working together to get new stuff, but uh, sharing the, the profits, right? There's patents and stuff. So, uh, yeah, though for the... For the, the, the business model, I am not sure, but uh, what I see is that uh, we have many projects with different companies from uh, all around the world, as you said. And uh, sometimes we, I make also funds other companies for smaller companies, startups or spin-offs to, for them to develop something else that we don't do. Uh, so it is like two ways, uh, let's say. 